I want to finish our chapter today with a discussion on how to choose the most convenient methods to graph a line. Uh, we'll have a short discussion there, and I want to introduce uh, two more topics at the end of this section on um, parallel and perpendicular lines, how we define them, and then some uh, question variations um, having to do with those topics. So again, we can see there's several different techniques on how to identify or even going about graphing some linear equation. We started with our conversation about how to uh, plot particular points. That is a technique where we choose values arbitrarily for x, uh, substitute them into the equation, and get some value out for y. The two points uh, create an xy ordered pair that we can then use to infer the linear equation. Once we have two or three individual points for some linear line, we can connect them all and say that straight line has got to infer or be the rest of our solutions. If we're a little bit smart, we can say that uh, finding the intercepts of some line is basically the same technique where we're a little less arbitrary about what values we substitute. In this technique, we substitute in x and y equals zero to find the x and y intercepts. Um, we may on occasion actually have to find a third point because there are equations at which the x and y intercepts are actually at the same place. Now, if the x and y intercepts are unique, meaning they're in different locations, that's really all we need to draw our straight line. And sort of a special case are the two types of equations where we have something like x equals to a constant or y is equal to a constant, in which case we have either a vertical or horizontal line. And in our fourth example, we see that uh, we might have an equation in what's called the slope intercept form where we can find a uh, point along the line quickly by identifying the y intercept, the constant term at the end of that expression. And then using the uh, idea of slope, that rise over run, we can get to a second point, a third, as many as we'd like in order to create the line. So that sums up uh, nicely the different techniques for how to actually graph. Um, our linear equations. What I want to get to now is identifying uh, these other types of lines. We can actually compare these linear equations to one another with some descriptions like are they parallel, are they perpendicular, they may be neither. So for our first definition we talk about parallel lines. Lines are parallel or easy to identify at least if they're parallel because they'll never touch. They remain some distance away from one another. And my two examples here, you can see that um, when they're nice and vertical, it's quite easy to tell that they never cross or intersect. Um, but at some angle, it can be kind of hard to distinguish. So we need to be a little bit more precise about our definition. We say that in the second line here, for instance, slopes of parallel lines are the same. They have equal measure. That's how we define whether or not two lines are parallel. So typically, again, we're not going to be given a visualization and asked, are these two things um, parallel, but some equations. For instance, here, I'm given two linear equations, one in standard form, the other in a nice uh, slope-intercept form, and we're asked to determine if the lines are parallel. So based on our definition, definition a second ago, the slope of the first line has got to be equal to the slope of the second, right? If I find... Uh, the slope here, and I'll dub this as slope 1, if it is equal in measure to what the slope is here, then we can say that these two lines are in fact parallel. Looking at that second equation, again, it's clear that it's in the y equals mx plus b form, and so the slope very quickly I can identify as the coefficient on the x term, it's 3 halves, right? Now, it's not as clear what the slope of the first line is. In fact, we've got to rearrange this such that it looks like the slope-intercept form. We can do so at first by subtracting 3x from both sides. I get negative 2y is equal then to negative 3x plus 6. Divided by negative 2 on both sides, I then get the equation y is equal to 3 halves x plus negative 3. And really I should just say uh, 3 halves x minus 3 like this. 
And so once I have it in this correct form, I can see that the slope of my second line is also 3 halves. And since the two lines happen to be the same measure, we can in fact say that the two lines are parallel. What about for perpendicular? It's a little bit difficult to even visually identify two lines as perpendicular. We say that they cross and create a right angle um, where they meet. So the two lines that you see here in the graphic to the right show two equations. You'll notice that each equation is already in the slope intercept form. We identify, for instance, the slope of this line, uh, y equals negative 4x plus 2, to be m equals negative 4. And the slope of the other line here to be m equals 1 fourth, right? So we can quickly identify the slopes here. The question is, what is the criteria to meet for two lines to be perpendicular? There's actually a couple ways to state this. Uh, the one I've uh, highlighted here is where we say that the product of the slopes has got to be equal to negative 1 for us to claim that these two lines are perpendicular to one another. Another way to state that same uh, sentiment is to say that the slopes must be negative reciprocals of one another. So, for instance, one fourth is the slope of my first line, let's say. To find a criteria of the negative reciprocal, I can satisfy either one of these two formulas. Now, the negative reciprocal just suggests that we want the reciprocal of our fraction, being 4 over 1 in this case, and the negative of that, which would be negative 4 over 1. In other words, the negative reciprocal of 1 fourth is negative 4. So, identifying the slopes as negative reciprocals of one another, we can be certain that the two equations that I have here are in fact perpendicular. So, all we're looking to do is satisfy either one of these two um, formulas for the slope. Now, given our example here, yet again I can see the quick uh, slope of the first line is negative 5 over 1. Now, it's not clear what the slope of the second line is yet. Yet again, we would have to rearrange this uh, into the correct form. Now, given this equation, I have x minus 5y is equal to 5. So by subtraction, I can get negative 5y by itself. And then divide by negative 5 on each side such that I get y is equal to positive 1 fifth x minus 1. So the slope of my second line, my m2, happens to be 1 fifth. So the question is, do these two create a product that is equal to negative 1. So m1 is negative 5, m2 is positive 1 fifth. Multiplying these two together, sure enough, does get me negative 1. So I can say with some certainty that these two lines are perpendicular to one another.